So we can all agree that the amount of melee weapons in Payday 2 is a little out of control and the variety of them is really just cosmetic to most degrees. With only a few different categories between them ranging from a couple of stun melees, some high damage ones, some quick strike ones and some seriously, seriously long and slow ones and then a few others in between. Coupled with some buffs in the past and certain skills, it was possible to one hit kill a bulldozer with a melee given the right loadout and succession of kills with the right skills etc. But now we have gone to a different level. I give to you the best melee build ever, ever, ever. Well, it's alright I guess. One thing to note about melee builds is that it's melee focused, meaning that in reality, well, in video game reality, you are running around trying to kill enemies by hitting them up close and they have guns heavy guns. This means you cannot, and I stress this, cannot play in the same style you are used to with a melee build than you would with any other build where guns are your primary focus. You will clearly do crap if you do. So why the hell all of a sudden is this guy talking about melee build? Well it turns out that in a recent update that a few of the lesser used and let's be honest worthless perk decks have been given a couple of boosts to make them more viable and in the interest of finding out I came to realize that it can be a lot of fun. The one I'll take a stab at today you get it? Stab? Melee? Oh, whatever. It's Sociopath, the fated perk deck from the Jacket Character Pack. Here we got some changes and it makes this melee perk deck something to be played with. Without going into the whole what's changed and all the mechanics, the long and short of it is that the Overdog perk at the beginning of the perk deck now gives a 10 times damage boost to your melee after the first hit if you land it after one second. Meaning if you are using a melee with 300 damage, it's going to deal 3000 on that second hit. Oh, and wait, it gets more ludicrous later on. With this perk deck, you also pick up some armor regen and health regen along with some damage reduction and armor boosts. The final perk in this deck gives a 75% chance that enemies in the small radius of you will go into a panic with a melee kill, which as you can see makes the enemies crippled and scared, allowing you to move more freely and get more kills. So with that being said and before the gameplay of this build sets off, let's take a look at the skills as there are some melee boosting in here also. To start off with we are taking medic skills all the way to inspire, this being a one down viable melee build this is the way to go, however I am forsaking the doctor bags for the first aid kits. Here we are trying to stay self sufficient and use as little doctor bags as possible. Placing down first aid kits along the routes you plan on running through to get your melee kills, this will allow the upper ace skill to kick in and you will automatically pick them up replenishing your health if needed. Hopefully less frequent as the health regen of the perk should also help. In Enforcer we are taking some shotgun skills here as we do want to have some form of ranged weapon and these guys have some good stopping power. These skills could obviously be switched out for assault rifle skills or even jokers if desired. I'm taking reload speed help and an important overkill skill for a 75% damage boost after my first shotgun kill. An extremely important skill here is actually the first skill, Underdog, a name akin to that of the first perk in the perk deck called Overdog. We are actually only getting this for the ace version regarding our melee as the basic doesn't apply but it does to our shotguns. So we receive a 10% damage reduction which is a great help when we are playing the close quarters combat role here. Next we're taking Resilience Ace for armor recovery and flashbang help, Transporter and Die Hard Basic for bag moving and interaction help and then on to Shocking or Ace. Here we gain more armor recovery but also the ability to knock back shields 100% of the time with our melee. Finally the Iron Man A skill to get 30% more armor and unlock the heaviest armor in the game, the ICTV. This is also important as we need as much armor as possible to get physically close to our enemies and then to be able to stay there by regenerating it as fast as possible. Next in the ghost tree are the basic mobility skills, duck and cover basic for more stamina and parkour ace for movement speed and the ability to reload while sprinting. We then take second wind basic which is again important as our armor will break a lot and having movement speed boost to get the hell out of there is needed sometimes. We'll then take optical illusions basic for an on target chance. And the fugitive tree is where it gets more interesting. The typical 9 lives ace for 1 down and then swan song ace for the ultimate 9 seconds of free slashing wonderfulness while you slowly drop for revival. In the brawler tree is where we bolster our melee. A lot. Martial arts ace because of training allows us to take 50% less melee damage off our enemies and also have a 50% chance of knocking an enemy down. This coupled with the panic we get from the perk deck is very powerful. Next is Pumping Iron Ace, here we boost our melee by 100% against regular enemies and special enemies. On to Bloodthirst Basic, here we increase our melee damage by 100% every time we kill an enemy with a melee attack, up to a maximum of 1600%. Finally we are taking Berserker Basic, the lower our health the more damage we do up to a maximum of 250% when our health is below 50%. 
Now let me be honest here, there are a lot of percentage boosts and increases here, and I'm not sure in what order they stack, but from what it looks like on a basic level is that the base melee damage is boosted from the martial arts skill, and then the multipliers are taken from there. You could argue that a couple of these skills at the end here are a little overkill, especially Berserker, but why the hell not go all in with it? So for the remaining part of the build, you can see that I'm taking the Katana. I do love choosing this weapon and using Jiro, as he sounds like he's really getting into it. The base damage is 70, boosted to 140, and has a pretty fast melee time, so you can get the consecutive hits within that one second for the perk deck to activate. We also choose the Shurikens to go with a the Ninja Jiro theme, and gives another option for stunning enemies. Of course, the ICTV armor, as mentioned before, and the first aid kits for quick regen in battle. For guns, just two shotguns, the Moscone and the Judge, with HE rounds. And that's it, the ultimate one down melee build. Give it a try, let me know how you get on with the new melee world, and happy slicing. <laughs> The L Factory Productions. Hey, you know, second, no, my one.